podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newharth, and today we're joined by Giannis Putellis, Randall Williams, Corey Calkins, Mackenzie Elmquist, Chili, Sam James, and Maddie Lehman. Maddie, this is your first time on the show. Tell folks what you do here at Meat Eater. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm on the email marketing team here at Meat Eater, so... I just send emails out for all of our brands. I kind of design them, write them, and build them. And if you ever received an email from me and there's a spelling error, now you know who to blame. So mm-hmm. <laughs> There's nobody checking your work before it goes uh, out. That's a yeah, lot of pressure. We've got a little bit of a check process, okay. but, you know, things slip through the cracks now and then. So. How do you feel about your chances at Meat Eater Trivia? I think if it's a question about the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, okay. I can do really well. Okay. Um, other than that, it's going to be complete guess. Did Mackenzie have to twist your arm to come in and play today? Absolutely. Really? I was dragged. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very Mackenzie, you feel good about it? Yeah, I volunteered her when oh, I messaged you. Good on you. Yeah. If you're not familiar, this is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking, and there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. Each week here on Trivia, we reveal a new stat... For the stat of the week this week, we're looking at the price of Meat Eater Trivia, the board game. Now, the game comes out this fall, and it will cost $25. That purchase gets you seven whiteboards, seven markers, a timer, and most importantly, 800 questions from our four verticals. That means each question costs you just three cents. Here are some other things that you can buy with three pennies. These are real prices, by the way. Three teaspoons of unleaded gasoline, two McDonald's french fries, three hours of a Netflix subscription, 56 yards of an Uber ride, or two flushes of a toilet. How do you feel about that, Yanni? A lot of value in that uh, Mm -hmm. board game that you're putting out there, I think. How many are you going to buy for Christmas this year, you think? Hmm... A good question. A few. Depends Everyone how- in my life is getting one. Uh, if, if you're listening to this and you know me and you normally get a Christmas present, mom, dad, uh, they're going to get a Meat Eater Trivia board game this year. Hmm. Yeah, are they going to enjoy it? We'll see. I, th- I think in future, matter. in future iterations of that list, you should mm-hmm. leave off the two flushes of a toilet because Does that, that seem actually like, seems okay, eminently pretty good more, value, actually. <laughs> there's like a lot of utility in that compared to one question. <laughs> Stay out of this, Randall. <laughs> are you gonna Are you gonna hand out the trivia board game to your contestants that partake? We'll see. You, if if maybe mm. if you win Ooh. a game, Chili, you could get one. So I'm never. Gonna Randall, get one. I think that uh, <laughs> makes it seem that it's there's a, still a lot of value to mm-hmm. to each that's, question. That's right. Because you're placing well, yeah, so much value on those two flushes. Well, it just Thank threw you, me Yanni. for a loop because 50 yards of an Uber or Lyft mm, does not get you much, but but two flushes <laughs> of a toilet. Goes a long way. <laughs> Depends on what you need. So I don't know if he's trying to make a claim that like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I thought that the, the, he should have maybe left the Uber. I thought one that out. the other comparisons were to were to show what a what a great deal relative sure. to the rest that the mm-hmm. a question was. Now, Meat Eater Trivia, the board game, will be out this fall for the low, low price of an 18 inch Apple phone charger, USB port not included. There you go. Now, here's our zero percenter question of the week, which tests how much knowledge players have retained from previous games. This question was from episode 378. The topic was wildlife, and nobody got it right. If you know the answer, you can just shout it out. How many continents have penguins? What are your guesses? Three. Two. 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 Wrong and wrong. One. One. Wrong. The uh, correct answer seven. is four. four. The incorrect answers given in that game were two, three, and five. Mm. The four continents are Antarctica, South America, Africa, and Australia. Africa? Africa Make, has them. Sense. I think it's every continent in the southern hemisphere has penguins. Madagascar, right? Uh, I think that's right. Not a continent, but right, part of well, Africa. Part of Africa. Are you basing that off of the movie? The kids. The kids, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I figured. Now we have some housekeeping to get to. In a previous game of trivia, we had a question about what color of bell pepper is the sweetest. The correct answer was red, and that remains true, but my explanation of bell pepper colors afterwards was not. Here's what I got terribly wrong. It is a myth that bell peppers mature by going from green to yellow to orange to red. 
Green, yellow, orange, and red bell peppers all come from different plants, but they do all start out as the color green and turn one of those other colors when they're mature. There are some exceptions to the rule, like if a yellow bell pepper gets too much sun, it can turn orange, but for the most part, each color of bell pepper is its own variety. Now again, the answer remains the same. Red bell peppers are the sweetest bell peppers, but they do not turn yellow or orange before reaching that color. How's that hit you, Yanni? Does that, does that seem right? Would have you known that? I don't think you were here for that game. I wasn't here for that game, and I probably would have guessed that it went from green to yellow to orange to red. But the question was, what is the sweetest color of bell pepper? Would have you known it was red? No, I would have guessed. It also red. has to do with male or female bell pepper. Did you know that? I don't know if that um, dictates the sweetness. Um, that, that could Not be. Not like... And- not in terms of colors, mm-hmm. but in terms of like if you have two red ones and one's a male and one is a female, mm. one's better for cooking and one's better for eating. Like I also, raw. I think there's something with male and female, I'm probably getting this wrong and it's going to be a future correction, so I shouldn't even bring it up, but I think there's something with the lobes on the bottom. Yeah, that it's is. It's like three versus three, four. Yeah. I don't remember which one's which. Now the Shelby index for today's round is a five, so I'm officially putting us on perfect score alert. With that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, wow. Oh. This is new for a lot of folks in the room. Very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Game on, suckers! Listen, after being at Chester's show last night, uh-huh. I could see we, we could have a little smoke machine and some oh. of those lights <laughs> okay. that make lights do mm-hmm. this, different directions, and then all the lights drop. Phil, what do you think? What would, what would it take for all that? Uh, yeah, that same guy you were going to talk about, about kickball, you should go talk to him okay, about I'll that. I'll put too. it on my J- J- <laughs> JB list. I think Phil would also need another hand or two over there to be running all these things. Uh, he's already maxed out. He uses all 10 fingers and toes to to get all the right levers and buttons. Question one. The topic is hunting, and this will be multiple choice. Which of these predators is not tracked in the Boone and Crockett record books? Is it cougar, polar bear, wolf, or grizzly bear? Which of these predators is not tracked in the Boone and Crockett record books? Cougar, polar bear, wolf, Grizzly bear. Randall and Chili with quick answers. Chili, do you have this one right? Oh, I'm about 93% positive. Okay, Randall, you, you have this one with certainty? Never certain. Well, certain in very rare circumstances. Mm-hmm. Feel pretty good about this. Again, your choices are cougar, polar bear, wolf, or grizzly bear. Yanni, how about you? You have this one right? I think so. Is Randall, have you ever entered an animal into the Boone and Crockett record books? No, I haven't. I've I've gotten one measured. Did it not score or you didn't? It was shy. Oh. It was shy. Mm. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying polar bear, Chili saying wolf, Randall saying wolf, Corey saying grizzly, Maddie saying wolf. Mackenzie saying grizzly bear, Yanni saying wolf. The correct answer is wolf. The room did very well. Suck it, Corey. Get out of here. The minimum score for a cougar is 14 and 8 sixteenths. For a grizzly bear is 23 and for a polar bear is 27. Pope and Young also tracks records for these three animals. And similar to Boone and Crockett, does not have a scoring system for wolves, but some game agencies, like the Alberta Fish and Game Association, do track wolf sizes. They score wolves the same way they score bears or cougars, which is by taking length and width measurements of the skull. Did you, when you were researching this, Mm -hmm. does SCI do it? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's a good question. Um, I would guess they don't, but I'm not sure. Question two, the topic is conservation. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Titus McKenty for sending this great question. Titus is going to get a book signed by Steve. According to the USGS, there are eight states that have glaciers. Name five of them. According to the USGS, there are eight states 
that have glaciers, I need you to name five of them. Yanni on your phone over here. Yanni, I don't think you would stand for that if, say, no, Chili I was making was a note that phone. I need to do the follow up for okay. about SCI uh, okay. Wolves. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's a little peek behind the curtain. We teased it on last episode. Yanni is going to host an episode himself coming up very soon, and I'm going to play. What else did you tease about that? Showing my uh, answer pretty right much now. the exact same thing said that. Um, well, Yanni. I think people want to know why we're going to do that. And if you're I don't, I don't excited, I I am nervous. I would prefer I would prefer to host. I don't have to prove anything about my own knowledge um, being on this side of the table. I think there's a chance, Yanni. You could do a poor job, and that makes me look really good. So I'm excited if, if that happens. Either way, I win. Either I get to take an episode off and not host, uh, and it goes really well, or I get to take an episode off, and it goes terribly, and then everyone's like, wow, uh, Spencer's pretty good at this. But what about just en- the personal enjoyment mm-hmm. of getting to play Meat Eater Trivia? I, I, I will enjoy watching you host more than I will enjoy playing. That's Listen, I'll I guarantee that. you I'm going to be more nervous really? hosting than okay. you are going to be playing. Okay. Again, the question is, according to the USGS, there are eight states that have glaciers. I need you to name five of them. How's it going, Mackenzie? Feel good about your five? No. Can I do more than... No, no. Do more and you will get it wrong. Okay. Randall, I think you and Corey are the only ones done, maybe. You have this one right, Randall? I think so. I've gone back and forth on which state I wanted to include for my mm. fifth slot. Okay. but So four of the five you're confident in. Well, I th- I th- I'm pretty confident in five as okay. well. I okay. just wasn't sure if I wanted to go for like a reach mm-hmm. or like a safe one that I'm sure. not, you know, it's just... Yanni, I think we are waiting on you, really? which is my fault. I distracted really? you with really? all the host ever, talk. No, no, we're 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 doing good. I'm close. I've got four. I've got four. Oh, come to me, baby. Isn't there typically a time limit on questions? There is not. Mm. You uh, mentioned that there's a timer in the board it, game. There is a timer <laughs> in the board I, I, game. When you said that, it, mm-hmm. I I found that interesting. Now, here personally, Randall, if mm-hmm. it was me and I was playing the board game, I'd throw that timer out. Um, but it's in there if you'd like to. I imagine, Randall, you're a stickler for board game rules. Would that be true? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. He would use the timer. Um, it's your choice. We were actually just talking about my my uh, my penchant for following and, and observing and knowing rules of board games last night. Good on night. you. Yeah. Does everybody have five answers? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying Alaska, Washington, Montana, Oregon, California. Chile saying Alaska, Wyoming, Montana, Washington, Idaho. Randall saying Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon. Corey saying Washington, California, Montana, Oregon, and Alaska. Maddie saying Alaska, Montana, Washington, Colorado, Wyoming. Mackenzie saying Alaska, Montana, Washington, Idaho, Colorado. Giannis saying Alaska, Colorado, Montana, Washington, Oregon. The eight states are Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and Nevada. I think where a few mm. folks went wrong is they included mm. Idaho, which mm. is not on the list. That was the one that I was questioning. Nevada, interesting. Utah and Idaho used to have a glacier, but both have shrunk to a size that no longer meets the USGS definition of a mm. glacier. There are about 100,000 glaciers in the United States, with the biggest being the Bering Glacier in Alaska. The glacier and its associated ice fields cover about 2,000 square miles. Question three, the topic is cooking. Anthony Bourdain once told Oprah that the reason restaurant food tastes better than home food is because chefs use so much of this. Here's the question again, the topic is cooking. Anthony Bourdain once told Oprah that the reason restaurant food tastes better than home food, and that is a quote, is because chefs use so much of this. A confident answer from Yanni. 
Yanni, do you know this one or you just have a an educated guess? Educated guess. You'll have to tell us about your uh, restaurant days after this and see if it rings true for you. Randall without an answer. Randall, Maybe you should open up a restaurant. Yeah. You feel like you have a th few things you're, you're torn between over there? Yeah, I, I've got a few different ideas, but I have no way of uh, choosing between them. Anthony Bourdain <laughs> once told Oprah that the reason restaurant food tastes better than home food is because chefs use so much of this. Has anyone in this room been to a glacier? We do have some in yes. Montana. I've been to a glacier. Glacier National Park or somewhere else? Been to Stone Glacier. <laughs> That's a good one, Chili. Yep. <laughs> Which one did you visit, Sam? I've been to Glacier National Park. I've been to uh, glaciers in uh, Chile in South America. Oh. Um, been to glaciers in um, British Columbia, skiing. You skied on the glacier? Yep. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Does everybody have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying butter, Chili saying MSG, Randall saying butter, Corey saying MSG, Maddie saying salt, Mackenzie saying salt, Giannis saying salt. We have a correct answer in the room. It's butter. A few people got that right. I think Randall and Sam. Here is one minute of that interview from 2001. Take it away, Phil. I think one of the things you said that you say in that piece is that we would be shocked at how much butter goes into everything. Yeah, I, I hope I haven't frightened anyone away, but it, it is usually the, the first thing and the last thing in, in just about every pan. Really? Uh, yeah, that's why restaurant food tastes better than home food a lot of the time. It's <laughs> butter. Even when you say, look, I'm really, I don't want any butter or I don't want any... No, if you say absolutely no butter, um, uh, just about every chef I know will, of course, uh, refrain But from most using. things have butter because butter makes things taste better. Yeah, it, it's a uh, chef's secret. It mellows sauces. It gives it that, that restaurant sheen and, and um, uh, emulsified uh, consistency that we love. And it's, you know, it's classic. We're, we're and it tastes on. good. Yeah, nothing like it. And it tastes good. So you say that by the average person when they go out to dinner eats about a quarter stick of butter and doesn't know it. Well, assuming, assuming you're going to a French restaurant, a yeah. uh, classic French restaurant, and you have a little bread and butter, you know, but waiting for your appetizer to come on board. By the time you leave the restaurant, you've probably eaten about a stick plus. Sure. A stick plus. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. foul. Yanni, in your restaurant days, <laughs> did you see an obscene amount of butter used? I would not say obscene. <coughs> More than maybe the average home of, cook, though? I, well, it's tough because now if you go to my house, mm -hmm. we, we have butter reserves. Mm. We don't mess around. We go through easily a stick of butter a day <laughs> at our house. Really? Do you guys make it yourself? No. Oh. Um, so I agree with him, mm -hmm. but I, in my restaurant experience, uh, that was not the case. Who else has worked in a restaurant here? Corey, did you for a bit? Did, did you see a lot of butter used there? Yeah, but nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. I use a lot at home as well. Probably because of the restaurant influence, though. That's right. Yeah, putting a pad of butter on a steak right off the grill is uh -huh. pretty common. Got it. Question four. The topic is gear. This next great question comes to us via Tom Christian. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at com. What pastel-colored candy was originally made with machines that pressed gunpowder into pellets? The room is stumped. What pastel-colored candy was originally made with machines that pressed gunpowder into pellets? Having a hard time thinking of what pastel looks like. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> Yanni is with pastel. A it's not single a single color. color. It's like multicolored. It's a, it's it a, looks like it, Easter. It's, it's a, a tone. Yeah. It's yeah. a tone. Yeah. Oh, not going to give you any hints. Mm. Uh, you could take what the room I don't, has I, just. No, I think we're looking for you. a clarification. Because hmm. is pastel a single color? Can no. you answer that? No. It's not. That right. is not a single. But there color. are pastels. There's. Like, it'd be right. like I think it'd be the equivalent, Yanni, if I said like. This gothic colored candy or something like neon, that. Neon, neon colored. There you go. In this case, it, they are pastel colored. Hmm. Here's the question again. What pastel colored candy was originally made with machines that pressed gunpowder into pellets? Oh. <laughs> you now know it, Chili? <laughs> well, I know, I know, 
I don't know the exact like given name. I know what it is. Okay. Which is like common. Like it, there's a lot of them out there. Okay. But I don't know like what the given name is. Yanni, are you now changing your answer? Yes. My first answer was just kind of <laughs> just what first came to mm. mind. But now now I think I have a better okay. answer. Randall, how's it going for you over there? It's not going well, Spencer. Okay. This may <laughs> well. this may ruin a perfect game, which I will feel bad about if yeah. it happens on a question. Uh, that is on the very edge of the Meat Eater universe. The topic, I'm upset in anticipation of that happening. The topic is gear. What pastel colored candy was originally made with machines that pressed gunpowder into pellets? Sam, are you going to come up with an answer? I feel like you I've also got... have a perfect game going. I missed the first question. Oh, okay. Take so, it back then. Uh, pressure's off. Um, but I've got a couple ideas. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to think. I think we might be waiting on you. Okay, I got it. Time to choose one. <laughs> yeah. That's um, what that means. Randall, do you have an answer? Oh, shit. No, I, I've i got a better answer. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel good about Thinks that. He has. Is everybody ready? <laughs> Phil, what have you gotten this one right? Uh, I don't think so. No. Hang on, I need a second. Okay, we're going to give Sam his second. <laughs> what pastel colored candy was originally made with machines that pressed gunpowder into pellets? Like I, I know like three pastel colored candies that are pretty popular. Mm -hmm. I probably could have like, you know, okay. a pretty good shot there, but not, not based on the history. Sam, mm -hmm. are we ready? ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying Pez, Chili saying Mints, Randall saying Pez. Corey sang nerds, Maddie sang smarties, Mackenzie sang nerds, Giannis sang good yeah. and plenty. We have a correct answer in the Maddie. room. It's smarties. Oh, oh, man. Nice. Or for our Canadian friends, rockets. After World War I, there was a surplus of gunpowder press machines, which the Smarties inventor repurposed for candy making as they learned the exact same process that created gunpowder pellets could be used to make sweets. Although today's machines don't resemble what they had in 1949, the shape has stayed the same. Now, in America, they're called Smarties, but Smarties in Canada are different, so their version are called Rockets. I was thinking... Uh... That's wrong. Altoids almost. I know they're not candy yeah, okay. and I know they're not really pastel. There's just the cinnamon ones mm -hmm. that are pastel, but I like where Maddie went with Smarties, like that little hard candy. Well, you should. It was a correct answer. Yeah. Once the room yeah. saw Maddie's yeah. answer, just, they uh, knew. I appreciated how she got there. I, I was going to go with just... candy hearts mm. with the little oh, messages on them. But then I couldn't envision, you know, gunpowder pellets having uh -huh. the inscription, I love you, or whatever <laughs> other friendly greetings they have on them. Maybe question five. The topic is fishing. This is a visual question. If you want to see what the room is seeing, then head over to Meat Eater's YouTube channel to watch this episode. Phil is showing the room a picture of a shark hunter played by Robert Shaw in Jaws. You need to tell me this character's name. I just watched this a couple uh -huh. weeks ago. You should be in oh, the man. pole position to get this right oh, then, man. Sam. Yeah, but... Randall, it seems like you do have this correct. I feel pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. He's even doing the accent. Thank you. <laughs> Keep going, Randall. Stuff. We're going to need to kill some time. That's People all don't I know got. the answer. That's all I got. I think you give Phil a run for his question. money <laughs> in uh, show tunes. Oh, yeah. Again, this is the shark hunter played by Robert Shaw in Jaws. You need to tell me this character's name. Corey, are you going to get this one right? Oh, that's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Seems as though Randall may be the only one. Hmm. Maybe. There's no certainty in this Okay. Point. Yanni, how many times do you think you've seen Jaws? Two or three. Okay. Not not giving you any confidence, though, in coming up with an answer. No. Randall, when's the last time you saw Jaws? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's been some time. You just know this, just because of your, your uh, trivia brain. 
you got I, this one right. I just had a name that came to mind immediately. There's no point in the movie where I can, okay. you know, recall someone mm -hmm. using this name in dialogue, but it just came to me. But I do sing the Fair Spanish Ladies song quite oh, often in my you head. You serenade yeah. your wife? No, no, it's just something I sing to myself. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> serenade yourself. Yeah. Does everybody who's going to come up with an answer have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying O'Malley, Chili without an answer, Randall saying Quince, Corey saying Schmidt, Maddie <laughs> saying Bill, Mackenzie saying Ronnie, Giannis saying Captain Jim. The correct answer is Quint. I don't think Shit. we're going to give it to oh, Randall. Suck it, Randall. Shit. <laughs> Randall went uh, C E instead of T at the end. In so certain mad. cultures, in certain cultures, you pronounce the C E with a T. Uh, You're so confident. <laughs> it's believed God. that Quint was based on Captain Ahab from Moby Dick. Some of the similarities include that they're both obsessive captains with enemies that live in the sea, and they both die after getting pulled under water. Water, Spielberg's original screenplay actually included <laughs> Quint watching Moby Dick in a movie theater, but they couldn't use the scene because of copyright laws. Phil, what have you gotten that one right? Yes, yes, I would have. Okay. Point oh. for with, Phil. A mm, with a T. With a T. <laughs> Solid one out of five or four there. Yeah. Yeah, with a T. I got the I got the hardest sound. <laughs> Uh huh. Couldn't quite yeah. finish it though. <laughs> Phil has won the corner. wind out of your sails there. A little <laughs> Give bit. us a yeah. scoreboard the update you just for everyone red. else. I'm, I'm, Pure anger. I'm humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> you were the closest in the room. So we've you got, got four out of five. Mackenzie with zero points. Chili and Corey are tied up with one apiece. Giannis and Sam have two. Maddie has three, and in first place is Randall with four. Nice. nice. Should have been five. Maddie, should have been good work. Uh, Contender. Randall, you should have three, I think, though. You didn't get Smarties and you didn't get Quint. Oh, yeah. I, I, so I didn't Should look, have been four. I didn't look at should his whiteboard um, when you were going around the room and I heard Quint and then I gave him a point and I did not take it away. I'll Almost do that right now. Okay. what, oh, Phil, how many are, points does Randall have? Randall now has three and is okay. tied for first with Maddie. Oh, Whoa. oh good on wow. you! Maddie. Anybody's game. Mm -hmm. Anybody's. Anybody's game. I feel Question sick to my six. stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Question six. The topic is conservation. East Blank Ohio is where the infamous train derailment happened on February third, twenty twenty-three. This is a fill in the blank. The town is not called East Blank. Here it is again. East Blank, Ohio, is where the infamous train derailment happened on February 3rd, 2023. Corey is the only confident player in the room. Corey, you have this one right? Yeah, I watched the news. <laughs> is this a cooking question? <laughs> this is conservation. Kind do you not, should, should do you not recall this so happening, it's Yanni? It's not an actual city, though? Is I think I was lion hunting. Oh, it's an actual, okay. You were lion hunting on February 3rd, so you missed the coverage of this uh, enormous event? I feel like yeah. it's, it's like something funky. East Funky Ohio is where the infamous train get, I, like, down <laughs> happened. I have an idea of what it is in my head, but I feel like I'm going to get made fun of if it's wrong. On February 3rd, I'm in the same boat. 2023. <sighs> I don't like the guess that's coming to mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where I'm at. But I just, it, like, it's so random that I feel like it has to be right. I was worried this question would be too easy and we'd have a 100 percenter. Uh, Corey may be the only one, though. I mean, we're failing against the old Shelby. Right. Today. She may take a victory on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Will she ever come in and do an actual episode? Uh, she has hosted an episode <laughs> that we did with the oh, spouses of Meat Eater. Oh. Um, I think it would be unfair for her to play. She has too much access to my brain, uh, where these questions come mm -hmm. from. Not that she would win very often, but she would certainly have an advantage. But conservation always wins. That's right. Blank. East Blank, Ohio <laughs> is where That's the infamous you. train uh, derailment happened on February 3rd, 2023. Oh, I just went with a... I it came down to a few towns in Ohio that I know, and I picked one of them. Never even been to Ohio. Is everybody ready? Big buck country. Mm-hmm. 
Spencer, you ever hunted big bucks in Ohio? Not in Ohio. Uh, Kentucky and Illinois would be the closest that I have come to Ohio. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We oh, have Sam yes. saying oh, yeah. Peoria, Chile saying go. Cincinnati, <laughs> Randall saying Palestine, Corey saying Palestine, Maddie saying Dayton, Mackenzie saying Palestine, Giannis saying Salem. The correct answer is Palestine. The room did pretty well, despite them not thinking they would. The 51-car derailment was considered one of the worst train accidents in modern history. The train was carrying hundreds of thousands of gallons of hazardous chemicals, some of which were set on fire in a controlled burn. It's estimated the cleanup will cost about $400 million, although that number is still growing. As of June, there have been 20 million gallons of liquid wastewater removed from East Palestine. How about the one that uh, fell into the Yellowstone? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, oh, the uh, that, I think they had, no, what was no. it, asphalt no, that was yeah. leaking out of, out of that one? of mm. asphalt. Bridge collapsed. It was made, like right before the fourth. <clears throat> made right. the river look uh, yeah. very disgusting. Question seven. The topic is cooking. This brand has the best-selling mason jar at Walmart, Target, and Amazon. This brand has the best-selling mason jar at Walmart, Target, and Amazon. A pretty confident room. Besides chili. It's a stretch, chili. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just give up now. He's consoling me in my efforts. Uh. This brand has the best-selling mason jar at Walmart, Target, and Amazon. I Randall, you do you have this one right? Every day. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm trying to remember it. I'm just going with the first word that came to mind. Okay, Maddie, do you have this one right? No. Yanni, you seem confident. I've got two answers written down. Okay. You you know two Mason brand <laughs> jars? I do. Two Mason jar brands. Really? Do you do a lot of canning? I wouldn't say a lot, but that's what uh, we use for our drinking vessels in our oh, house really? for a long, long time. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But you we have, have, you have cups now too. or not? No. We go, we, we'll go. we buy a, a set, uh-huh. and within months, they're all broken, and then we're like, ah, back to the mason jars. Do they, well, what do they, are you doing when you're breaking all of these? That's <laughs> what I was going to ask. Is it just like classic <laughs> drop it on the ground, or what's going on? I, it just seems, no, they're just like little... Tinks and dinks mm-hmm. here and there, oh, okay. and I don't know. Loading the dishwasher yeah, probably dishwasher. is how often, most often it happens. You get mad watching the nuggets and you hurl one across the room. Mm, that's <laughs> the most common way. No, that's the thing. I like to buy like a nice low ball glass, mm-hmm. you know, and be able to serve my guests a nice drink. Sure. And then sure enough, there's only three out of four left within weeks. Again, this is question seven. Phil, good on you going back to the Jaws question. I meant to send you a picture. I never did. Phil is so professional and so prepared that he had one ready for us anyway. Yeah, I tried to find one where he looks kind of regal standing there. Is everybody ready for the brand of the best-selling mason jar? Come on, Chili. Just write a word. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. I don't don't know any brands. Uh... Go ahead and reveal your answers. Sorry, Chili. Sam says ball. Chili says jelly. Randall says ball. Corey says smuckers. (laughs) Maddie says country kitchen. Mackenzie saying ball. Giannis saying ball. The correct answer is ball. Yanni would have been the other brand, Kerr. Is that what you're thinking of? The mason jar was invented by John Landis Mason in 1858 at the age of 26 years old. Ball Corporation licensed his design and started making their own home canning jars in 1884. Along with salt and refrigerators, the mason jar is considered one of the greatest achievements in food preservation in human history. Question 8. The topic is wildlife. This next great question comes to you is via Justin LaPlay. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at TheMeatEater.com. This animal was declared the official national mammal of the United States in 2016. Mammal? This oh. animal was declared the official national mammal 
of the United States in 2016. Randall, do you have this one right? Randall? You're going to bust out in the song again about it? I think so. Mm-hmm. Randall is the I don't only have person a good, confident. I, I don't have a good National song for it, though. Mammal. <laughs> In 2016, this animal was declared the official national mammal of the United States in 2016. Ooh, stumper. Who came up with, what was this guy's name? <laughs> Just in the play, the topic is wildlife, and this is question eight. We will get a scoreboard update from Phil the Engineer after this. Again, looking for the official national mammal. I'm just still shocked that mason jars are named after the inventor. Mm-hmm. I always assumed that there was some sort of utilitarian sure. prior life before they became. If I had to guess, I would, I would have uh, guessed like, oh, it's something to do with the Mason Dixon line. Um, mm. lot, maybe this guy was associated or with the Mason Maybe Dixon line. Maybe they used to be, yeah, I don't know. Randall may be the only it's, one. It's like Count Stroganoff. Right. That still, that still <laughs> oh, sticks yeah. with me. Does anybody besides Randall feel confident about their answer? Answer. I didn't no. know we had national mammals since 2016. We have only recently. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yanni. I think we may oh, be waiting yes, on Spencer. you. Oh, you're waiting on I think me. We're waiting on you. What do, What do you think? I'm going to show you these two. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I close? <laughs> Not going to give you any hints. Let me see what you got. <sighs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. That was actually Corey, one are of you my ready? thoughts. Yeah. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying oh, buffalo, chili it. without nice an work, answer. Matt. Randall saying bison, Corey saying oh. grizzly bear, <laughs> Maddie saying black bear, Mackenzie saying bison, Giannis saying dog. The correct answer. It is a mammal. Is bison. Chili did have an answer. A few right? folks yeah. got it right. Chili said dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mammal. Okay. It is a mammal. <laughs> Randall would not let him not reveal his board. Buffalo is incorrect. Buffalo, we will give you buffalo. All right. The Sam. American buffalo. Uh, that, mm. that counts. That's how Steve likes to call it. So the American bison joined the bald eagle as an official United States symbol when the National Bison Legacy Act was signed in 2016. The cause was championed by the Wildlife Conservation Society, who said the species perfectly represents American history, American culture, and American conservation. I was looking at that guy right over there. Mm. Oh, we have, yeah, and that guy we right have a Oh, yeah, a that one, too. Oh, that's a musk <laughs> oh, just It's kidding. a Canadian bison. Oh. Yeah, this room can symbol. actually give you a lot of hints. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of help. Randall, do you remember when that happened, or how did you know that bison that was guy. the right answer? I I remember that happening, <laughs> and I also just knew it. Phil, we have two questions Not left. Not a great explanation. Give us a leaderboard update. <laughs> I'm about to break a bunch of hearts. Chili, Corey, Maddie, McKenzie, and Giannis have all been eliminated. <gasps> but we've got Sam with four points and Randall in first place with a... Uh, a tight six. He's he's got a two points six. on Sam. I was trying to I tight <laughs> scratch that. Pretend I didn't say tight six. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> a hot six. Hot for six. Hot six. Deep six. We would need Ooh. Randall to get these last two wrong. And who's in second place? Sam. Sam, Sam to get these last two right to go to a tiebreaker. Question nine. The topic is fishing. What frequently mimicked mayfly goes by the acronym PMD? Oh, I just. What frequently mimicked Corey, mayfly goes by the acronym PMD? I'm going to lose some respect. <laughs> it's what the confident you... room. You need to tell me what a PMD is. Maddie and Chili do not look so confident. Mackenzie, did you get this one right? Yes. Yanni, you got this one right? I'm going to tell you all about my favorite okay. PMD imitation. Okay. Oh, you know oh, what I learned last night? That brings back some memories. <laughs> some memories from like last year or what? From when you were no, a kid? No, when I used to guide mm, and, okay. and we used to fish a pretty heavy PMD hatch like mid to late summer. Mm. And uh, yeah, if you had the right fly, it mm-hmm. was stellar. Is everybody ready? 
for the folks who are going to come up with an answer. I learned last night that the mm -hmm. shortest mayfly life like cycle is five minutes. I knew they were like mm. a day usually, but the shortest one's five minutes. Which one was that, Mackenzie? Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but I learned that it the was shortest short. One, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your your answers. We have Sam saying pale morning done, chilly without an answer. Randall saying pale morning done. Corey saying pale morning done. Maddie saying white fly. <laughs> Mackenzie <laughs> saying pale morning done. Giannis saying pale morning done. They got it. The correct answer is pale morning done. For trout and trout anglers, this is considered one of the most important bugs in North America. The pale morning done is almost unmatched when it comes to sheer numbers, wide distribution, and hatch duration. PMDs are known for being some of the first hatches that appear after runoff in late spring and early summer. Take it away, Yanni. What do you got for us Can on you guess PMDs? what it is for all the fly anglers? Parachute no? PMD? Uh, no. Sparkle done? The Patriot. The mm. Patriot. Yeah, it's like got kind of an orangish reddish body and just a little bit of a uh, like a shiny clear midsection tied like a wolf. Mm. So it's done. Killer. It's an adult pattern. Yeah, not like a rusty spinner, for instance, which would no, be a no, PMD. No. Yeah. When did the PMD hatch happen in Montana? Was it like right now? Okay. Has has anyone thrown a PMD? Well, it depends lately? on what river you're on. Mm -hmm. but down here, it's right now. Question 10. Randall has it wrapped up. He has seven points, which is too big of a lead for him to be caught. We'll finish the game anyway. The topic is public lands. This last great question comes to us via Justin Patterson. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. New River Gorge became this landlocked state's first national park in 2020. Are you writing New down your River conservation <laughs> New River Gorge became this landlocked state's first national park in 2020. Randall, do you have this one right? I do. Why do you know this one? You just remember the, the well, news hitting? I know where New River Gorge is. Okay. Well, Phenomenal bungee jumping. <laughs> that helps. And base jumping. Have you bungee jumped there? No. Okay. Did you base jump I've, there? I've rafted the New River. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of the oldest rivers in the world. Wow, keep going. It here. used what else to be got? the Tees River. T. I, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the correct pronunciation. Confidently T handing out hints to the room, but that's Great. fine. You've won yeah, the game. Keep, keep going. T e a y s. Uh huh. Um, and I'll, I can't describe its course because I think that would be giving away too much. But okay. Really interesting river. New River Gorge became flow, this uh, landlocked east state's or west, this first river national north. park in 2020. Is anybody else going to get this right? I have a solid guess. Solid I have a, like guess. a 150 chance. I'm guess. It's important to remember that Randall was also very positive about quints. Yeah. So mm. we'll see. He did. He did <laughs> throw <laughs> some he doubt the out there. Though. To be fair, he said there's nothing assured in this game. He said maybe I have it wrong. Listen, you've already won. I'm just trying to take you down just a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, th this is the I will be laying in bed tonight thinking about how <laughs> stupid I sound. Yeah. Well, at and, least and you then, didn't say tight six. And then <laughs> I, uh, that's your I'll new catchphrase. I'll refrain. <laughs> I'll refrain oh, please, from please tight no. six. But uh, yeah, I'll, when this is released, I'll uh, go on YouTube and I'll look at the comments <laughs> and I'll just wait for somebody to say, "What an idiot! Yeah. What an idiot!" And I know it's coming, <laughs> and winner, I'll look for uh, it, and then I'll just feel that wave of humiliation and embarrassment <laughs> wash over me once again. This is just. This is how my mind works. This is how I live. And that's why you're good <laughs> right at trivia. There with you. I, I love how you thought this through already. <laughs> Cave of misery. <laughs> is everybody ready? Corey? One second. Sorry. Mm. I like how you two are twinning. It's cute. Oh, we, we called each other. Oh, one. you went three in a row there, actually. With oh, wait. The I didn't even know. Oh, shirts. Oh, oh, look at those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. A little Randall sandwich. In case you guys didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Every, I, you might have just stolen the, the, the tight six. I mean, it just became the Randall sandwich. Corey, are you ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Sam saying Illinois. Chili saying North Carolina, not landlocked. Randall saying West Virginia. Corey Idiot. saying Missouri. Well, Maddie saying Carolina. Missouri. Mackenzie saying Kansas. Giannis saying West Carolina. Virginia. The correct answer 
is West Virginia. Giannis and Randall got it right. The New River Gorge was established by Jimmy Carter as a national river in 1978 and redesignated by Donald Trump as a national park in 2020. The park is 53 miles long and follows the New River Gorge through southern West Virginia. The area is known for some of the best whitewater rafting and rock climbing in the east. Randall wins with a sexy eight points. Well done, Randall. Nice work, Randall. I'm, 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 job, I'm Randall. actually glad that you did Quince instead of Quint because then I would have felt devastated that you got the Smarties question wrong, um, and it would have cost you a perfect game. Yeah, that, it is. Sometimes it is nice to mm-hmm. fall two rungs short of the objective. Randall, as the winner, you get to choose where the five hundred dollar donation from Meat Eater goes. What's it going to be? I'd like. I'd like this donation to go to the organization Keep It Public, which does a number of hands-on conservation projects around the country. And uh, just this past weekend, they were on the CMR here in Montana pulling fence. Which CMR. Is the Charles M. Russell National Wildlife Refuge. And they've been doing uh, fence pulls there for the past seven years. And I was unable to participate this year, so you just did by giving in lieu, yeah, in lieu of the, my sweat equity, I will, I will send some cold hard cash their way. Well done, Randall. Randall. That is a new organization, I believe, for this show. Oh, sh- we've not yeah. given to them before. Mm-hmm. Keep it public. Five hundred dollars coming their way from Randall and Meat Eater. Join us next time for more Meat Eater trivia. The only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs>